Look how beautiful it is. It's so blue and it's so beautiful. Oh man, that's a good thumbnail. Oh no! He broke off. No! Did I lose my jig? Get the gaff, boys, get the gaff. Oh my Lord. I've been paddle boarding a lot these last few days. See, I got my paddle board, my paddle. Been going out for like two, three hours a day. And I have found the mangrove snapper honey hole. I'm talking like 18, 20 inches, piles of them. So I was debating today, do I want to take the paddle board out, do a paddle board fishing video, or do I want to take my boat out, head out to the, to the reef and see what I can catch on the reef. And I have this external fuel tank here that I'm going to hook up to my boat. I'm going to tell you why. I think that I have something wrong with my fuel tank. And my fuel tank is located like here to here. And I don't know if there's like a little cut in it or something's pulling air into it or something. A clog, something. I think there's something wrong with it. So I'm going to hook my engine up directly to that fuel tank. And we're gonna fish all day on it and if the engine has no problems at all then i know i got a problem with the fuel tank which isn't that big of a deal we would just have to cut the floor out right here pull it out pull the old fuel tank out put a new one in fiberglass it back up not the worst thing that could happen but if we still have engine issues on the external fuel tank then i know there's definitely some kind of engine issue and in that case I might just buy a new Yamaha and just call it a day. But I actually really like this Evinrude because when it runs, she purrs like a kitten. She's got a lot of torque. And she's a bad mama jama. So I'm gonna go get some extra fuel. I'm gonna go grab a couple of rods. I'm gonna go grab some ice, get the boat loaded down, and then I'll show you guys my baits and we'll head offshore. Get, get, I was getting some gas. Get, getting some gas. Kaboom, we got the gas on the boat. We got the PC Fun tackle backpack. This thing is awesome. And I'm just bringing a whole slew of rigs. People keep asking me how I keep this organized, but I got my weights. So I got some bigger weights for bottom drifting, medium sized weights, small weights, ones I can just snap on. Like those small weights are for like mangrove snapper fishing, kind of shallow water. The medium sized weights are more like patch reef kind of stuff. And then the deeper weights is like drifting for grouper and muttons or just drifting a bait down deeper. Anywhere from like 80 to 200 feet. And we just got a bunch of hooks components swivels all sorts of goodies in here today i'm feeling kind of ballyhooey it's a ballyhoo kind of day so we got some frozen ballyhoo but i would like some fresh ones so we got ourselves a box of chum got some ice in there got a couple of drinks no food so i might starve but i got a like a mesh bag that i picked up we're gonna put the chum bag in here oh yeah that'll work perfectly there's a vertical jig in there and empty beers and my pliers. What have I been doing? I do know a good vertical jigging spot. I want to try something I haven't done before. These are our lip candy jigs, two ounce. So it's a nice heavy weighted jig. I got one on our PC fun captain 8,000 reel right here. And I want to put a ballyhoo on this. And then I was going to get some copper wire and put it through the eye of the hook and copper wire the nose of the ballyhoo on here so he stays on here real well. But I don't have any copper wire, so I do have some zip ties. Oh look, there's a iguana over there. Those little lizard things just jumping around here, but look at this contraption I've put together. So this is my, just a fuel tank that I have. <clears throat> I filled it up with gas, Rec 90. and. I hooked it up to go to this hose, which goes directly to the engine. So I'm completely bypassing the fuel tank, which is down here and all the hoses that go to it. Um, I'm bypassing my water separator and I just checked it because this is a Raycor and they're clear on the bottom. And look at this footage that I took from my phone. You can clearly see all the water down there on the bottom of it. So there's water in my fuel. That's probably what's been causing all the issues all along now the question is is it a bad fuel tank do i need a whole new fuel tank 
or did I just get some bad fuel at one point? And I just gotta pump it out. I'm not sure, but either way, we're just gonna run it completely on a separate fuel system and we'll just see how the day goes. If we have a good day of fishing, then we know I got a probably a semi-serious fuel issue, but I'm not too worried about it. I think we could take this off pretty easily, cut this square out, pull the fuel tank out and put a brand new one in. If you know someone that does that, you know, I'm not asking for a free job or anything, but yeah, someone could come to Key Largo and do that. Woo, send me a quote, baby. I think it's time to fire her on up, but hold on. I didn't even finish showing you guys my tackle bag here. So in the top of it, I keep all of my leaders. I got a bunch of leaders in there. I also got my crimpers. And then on the side of it, these are all my, uh, these are like jigs. Got some paper towels and stuff in there. And then on the right side of it, I got a bunch of vertical jigs. Boom, drop the jig. These that my subscriber made me. Just got a bunch of jigs in there. So if I'm ever heading offshore on someone else's boat, I just gotta slap this on my back, grab my favorite rod or two, and, and I'm good to go. All right, let's turn the boat on. Trimming down. Okay, it's trimming down. I think I definitely want to go in the tower. All right, let's see if it turns on. Oh, I should probably pump it first. Oh yeah, I got to open the air valve on here. Why is that dripping? All right, that is why I always bring my trusty toolbox. See, I can repair most problems offshore. In fact, I don't think I've ever ran into an issue where I haven't been able to get back home somehow on my own. Even if that meant I was limping. I feel like Bob the Builder right now. Can he build it? Yes, he can. Why do I feel like I've said that before on an older video? All right, let's see if the engine turns on with our external fuel tank hooked up. Yeah, she did. And she sounds like she's running really good. Sounds perfect, actually. Untying. Now, don't go floating off without me now. I really want to be in the tower, but first I'm going to drive from down here just to make sure everything's okay. That way if something explodes, you know, I'm right here and I can jump on top of it. Going very well. Kayakers are coming out of that hole like a zombie horde. It's about to turn into a game of Frogger when we get in this channel here. Good thing I have accurate precision analysis targeting indicators to never allow failure to persist upon my path because I can intercept any kayaker from 5,000 yard radius, active tracking at all times, undefeated. There's a barracuda right here in the water and he's got a fish in his mouth. Oh, I don't think you can see that. Barracuda just caught a fish, like, right there. That was, that was kind of crazy. It was a mahara that he had in his mouth. A pretty big one too, it was like that big. All right, we're in the main channel. Let's put this puppy up on plane and see how she rides. Oh baby, yeah. All right, you know what time it is? It's time to get in the tower. She's running great. I feel confident in her. Wow, we already burned half of that thing. Are you kidding me? Wait, what? All right, just getting out here, I already burned half of that thing, but luckily we got plenty of fuel. So we will be rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling, baby. Yo, dog. Hey, oh, hey, heck yeah, man. What's your name? I live in Gibraltar. Okay, heck yeah. Awesome You've been fishing out here a lot? Yeah. It's like one of the few days I go offshore on this thing. <laughs> right? I was like, I know, I was looking at the weather and like the last, th like last week I got caught in three storms out here. Yeah. Like those thunderstorms and then I was just like, today looks nice. Dania, Dania? Yeah. Okay. What road do you live on? Gibraltar. Gibraltar. Okay, so right down the road. All right, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you around. Yeah, for sure. All right, have a good one. I'm in the tower, baby! I'm in the tower! We 
Would you look how beautiful that is? <laughs> We're not even at the clear part yet. That's just first reef. This is first reef. Land is right there. This is first patch reef right here. See all the, the patches? Great fishing spot. But uh, not what we're after today. But man, we gotta do some patch reef fishing. Woo! Shirtless, baby! <laughs> What's this? A sunken ship? <laughs> you, you see the ballyhoo jumping? They're barracudas chasing ballyhoos out here. We got ourselves some crystal clear waters, some tower action, a couple of barracudas over there, barracuda right there. Damn, this is a really cool spot. All right, we are looking for a ballyhoo right now. So now I'm gonna drive around. And when I see a bunch of ballyhoo jump up, you know, one of the benefits of having a tower on a boat is I can look down and I can see the ballyhoo darting through the water. So once we find some ballyhoo, I'm gonna anchor up. We're gonna put the chum bag out. We're gonna catch some ballyhoo. And then hopefully we we'll catch some dinner because I'm starving. I didn't bring any food. That was a bad idea. I'm hungry. Look how beautiful it is. It's so blue and it's so beautiful. Oh my God, it's so good. I can't get enough of it. Woo yeah, baby. I just saw some ballyhoo scatter around the boat. So I think this spot might be a good spot to, to start. Hoo yeah infamous ballyhoo i don't even know how deep we are how deep are we all right let's check our depth we are in 47 feet okay we'll turn the engine off for now she ran beautifully if you want to reach out to me heiko at southwarfishingchannel.com that's my email address and we got ourselves the blue label block of chum tournament master we're gonna stick it in our beautiful little mesh bag all right get some flavor in the water hopefully these ballyhoo show up they better show up all right we got good news and we got bad news the good news is there's ballyhoo i see them they're not that thick but oh uh, there's like 20 of them maybe the bad news is they're staying low they're not on the surface they're like two feet under the water which makes it very difficult to catch them but we're gonna try I thought I heard some splashing. Look at this little guy. You see the file fish? He's eating right off the chum bag. Naughty little guy, that's right. Get, go on, get out of here. Scram. Seems like the ballyhoo disappeared. I don't know what's up with these ballyhoo. They're not cooperating with me at all. Might have to open that pack of frozen ballyhoo, but I was really trying to avoid that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm pulling the anchor up and we're going to, I'm just gonna kind of like idle around the reef with the chum bag out until I find some ballyhoo and then we're gonna, you know, do what we do best, catch them. Finding them is the hard part. Catching them, that's not that hard. See this big sandy patch here? You wanna make sure that when you throw your anchor that it lands on the sand. Bullseye! Bingo, bango. All right, maybe the ballyhoo are here in more shallow water, but you can see we got, this is, uh, we're only in 14, 15 feet of water now. Beautiful reef, sand, hopefully ballyhoo. Look at that water, damn. You know, it's one of those days the ballyhoo just don't want to cooperate, or I'm just in the wrong spot really. But good thing we got this bag of frozen ballyhoo. They're defrosting now and I figured while we wait for those to defrost, I might as well, I might as well jump in. Look how beautiful that reef looks. And now that we've been chumming for a while, we might even have a couple of sharks come in. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, we're hopping on in. <laughs> it's nice and chummed up for us. Maybe we'll see something cool. Maybe a tiger shark, I've seen it. Ooh, ooh.
God, that felt good. Yeah. All right, we need to we need to get the fishing because we're never gonna get a fish at this rate. If I would have brought my actual pull spear, I could have got a snapper right there. I saw like two legal snapper, but oh, there's a couple big barracudas I could have shot too. Damn. But I didn't bring any of my spear fishing stuff. Next time, next time we'll get them. What a refreshing swim. And to my surprise, some ballyhoo showed up, but uh, there's almost no current, so it's gonna be very hard to get them. But I'm just gonna let the net drift back and maybe we can get one, maybe not. Doesn't matter, we got frozen ones if not. We got a couple of our ballyhoos, our frozen ballyhoos here, and we're gonna take your knife and just gently peel all the um, scales off of your ballyhoo. It's like that. It's gonna make them swim so much better when they don't have any scales on them. Let me show you how I rig one of these lip candy jigs with these ballyhoo. So let's give ourselves some line. Okay, so I have a zip tie, but normally I would use a copper wire for this that is stuck on the eye of this jig, but let's try to make it work. So we want to troll a ballyhoo through the water, kind of like, maybe like, maybe like through the eye. So like, kind of like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put zip ties through the eye and I'm going to basically line it up just like this. So I want my hook to go in here, up, just like that. Oh, it's looking good. And then we're gonna put the zip tie through the eyeballs. Okay, we should have poked the eyeballs out first, but here, I'm just gonna poke right through them. See that? Zip tie is going through the eyeballs and then we're gonna tighten it. There we go. We'll break the beak off. Now, the only problem is because we don't have any of the copper wire, the mouth is kind of open. Hopefully this won't spin, but I think this will troll pretty good. We'll see. Ah, uh, yes, and don't forget to clip off the zip tie access. All right, let's see how it swims. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna rig up another one of these and we're just gonna troll two of these and then I might troll one dive plug on the 50 wide. So two ballyhoo and a dive plug, we'll just see. But we're just gonna drive right to the edge of the reef there in like 50 feet of water and we'll start trolling these guys. All right, baby, fire on up. Woo wee. Perfect. Pick up the anchor and let's go fishing. Look at this guy. Big juice ball. Let's see how he swims. All right, we got one out and then I'm gonna put the other one out. There's the other one. Let's see how he swims. Oh yeah, perfect. You see him down there? <laughs> If, if nothing bites this, then, then I quit. Just kidding. And I'll just try something else. All right, so right now we're in gear, but let me tell you the real secret of trolling these ballyhoo with the weights on them. So we're gonna put the boat in neutral, which means we're no longer moving forward because right now with this slow troll, the two ballyhoo, they're probably about three feet under the water. But now that we're in neutral and we're not moving anymore, they're gonna slowly start sinking all the way down and just slowly sink. And in about 30 seconds, I'll probably be down there around 40, 50 feet and I'll put the boat back in gear, which is gonna bring them back up to the surface. And this kind of swinging motion along the reef, you, you might have a big mutton snapper, a big grouper sitting on the bottom, seeing these ballyhoo and they'll come up and just smash them. That's what we're hoping for right now. That's the game plan, but no bites so far, but we've only been doing this for about a minute, two minutes. So now I'm gonna pick up the speed again and it should lift them off the bottom. Look at that. Look at it! 73 feet of water, look at all that fish! Come on! You can't just look at my baits and not eat them. Oh no! Guys! No! I've been robbed! This is why I like to use copper wire, because I could easily just tie on another one. This Now this is all complicated, because I gotta like cut these off. Yeah, it feels like such a waste using zip ties. Do we think we still have a bait on this one? About to have to re-rig two, two ballyhoo, come on. All right, this one's still good, okay. That actually makes me very happy. Oh, in the tower. 
This is where I feel the most alive. So I got my rod up here with a ballyhoo. I'm gonna stick him in this hole. Got my rod ready with a ballyhoo. If I see a mahi, I can just pitch right to it. So what I'm gonna do now is just drive around. I'm gonna head offshore and I'm just gonna see if I see a mahi. Come on, mahi, where y'all at? I'm looking for you. So I've been running around looking for the mahi. None yet, but a lot of seaweed here. And sometimes if you don't see the mahi, just drop down drop down your bait and see if something swims up to it. So I'll go ahead and toss this guy right down here. Wow, that's a, he swims so good. He looks so realistic down there. There's definitely mahi around here, guys. 100% mahi around here. Like I don't see any, but I just, I feel it. Like my intuition, like told me to come out here and look for mahi and it's just like i just feel it it's happening come on baby let me find the mahi i just spotted a really nice triple tail in the weeds i hope i didn't scare him off i think i almost ran him over but i hope he wants to eat a piece of ballyhoo all right i cut a piece of ballyhoo and i have Luckily, I have the Captain 2000 PC Fun, my super light action rod, and I got it with the yellow tail hook. I'm gonna put a little piece of ballyhoo on there. Okay, now where is, where did that triple tail go? I think he was up here somewhere. Where'd he go? Is he like right up on the boat maybe? Gosh darn it, what happened to my fish? He was right under the boat. There he is, he's right there. He's right there under that seaweed, okay. I'm gonna get him this time. Got my rod ready. Yes, 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 yes. Oh no, there's all these little fish that wanna eat my bait, you see them all? Where's that triple tail? Yeah, he's so big, he's a keeper too. He's like, is that him right there? I really want that triple tail, but I don't. He is eluding me. I accidentally dropped my hook in the water and literally hooked a fish in like two seconds. These guys are super hungry. If you want to know how to catch a fish in one second, maybe two seconds, find yourself a weed patch offshore. Put on yourself a, a chartreuse self or a fishing channel yellowtail hook. Dip it in the water and bam! <laughs> Wait, dip it in the water, bam! <laughs> oh my gosh, oh boy. You know, this would be a really good live bait for a really big mahi makes me think I wonder if I should keep him nah I'm gonna let him go whoa something feels very fishy we got a weed line that runs as far as the eye can see and there's like some kind of currents colliding right here if uh, it's probably hard to see on video but the water is like swirling right here it's it's really weird it's like rocky and swirling on this side and then on the other side of the weeds it's just flat this is so fishy out here, it's crazy. I will not go home empty-handed. That is not an option. I'm gonna even turn the engine off and enjoy a little bit of peace and quiet. So we're gonna do a little bit of drifting over a spot I have out here. We are in 240 feet of water. So we're gonna chuck our ba uh, ballyhoo out. It's just gonna drift behind the boat. Maybe something will come scoop them up. And you know what we're gonna be doing? Well, Oh, ho, ho. you already know we're dropping the vertical jig down. Yeah, baby. The surefire way to put a fish on the boat when you start to get a little desperate. 238 feet. There's some stuff down there, like one, two, three fish. Nothing crazy, but I think it's worth a try. Oh, I think something just grabbed it. Oh, something grabbed it. What the heck? Yep, we're on. He's coming up. Oh, this thing is fighting very weird. I don't know, it was, it's like I was reeling up and then I was letting it drop and then all of a sudden it started dropping very fast and then I closed the bail and he was on. So he, he hit it while it was sinking and then he came up really easy for a second. Oh, right, like right there. Woohoo! head shake, head shake. Oh, baby. Oh, he's got a crazy head shake. No. Did he just come off? Ah, something happened. He just got a lot lighter. Come up, come up, come up. Don't get eaten by a shark. Dude, he's got a weird, like like an African pompano or something, like a weird side wiggle. 
Oh my God, I think I need the gaff. Where's the gaff? Okay, got the gaff. Almaco Jack. Hey, those are very good eating. I was expecting something else though. Oh, you know what I think happened? Look how weird, look, he's he's hooked in the side, so I was pulling him by the side, so he felt like a, like a brick. Very delicious fish right there. And I am starving, so. Oh yeah, those are gonna be two beautiful fat fillets. Perfect for the grill. Where's my knife? All right, I'm gonna dispatch him real quick in the, in the Yeti bucket. All right, one bucket full of water. Then we're gonna take him out of this world to the next. Going back down for round two. Hope you're ready, buddy. We are on the bottom. Oh, oh, I'm on, I'm on. Yes. Oh, he's mad. He's mad. Okay, not happy. He's not. Oh, oh snap. I would prefer if you would come back up to the top, sir. Yes, gaining some line on him finally. Woo, bent rods. What a freaking great day. I'm, today's gonna, a good day. You know, another good day in the books. All right, this fish has some spunk. This is gonna turn into uh, quite a fight actually. I'm not really gaining any line on him. Looks like he wants me to fight him off the bow which uh, challenge accepted. Oh man, that's a good thumbnail. Oh no! He broke off. No! Did I lose my jig? Oh, I tightened the drag just a tiny bit just because uh, the fight was taking a while and I just wanted to have a little extra oomph, but uh, I think in hindsight that was a bad idea. Yeah, the line, that, that line straight up, look at that, straight up cut. That's sheer energy snap. All right, we're gonna do another drop. This is the the Darth Vader vertical jig by my subscriber. Handmade, hand painted, and looking real, real good. Really curious what fish we just lost, but uh, it was fighting good. This time I'm gonna be a little more patient. I put a new GoPro battery in. Half the reason that I tightened my drag is because I only had like 8% GoPro battery left and I knew that at the speed I was fighting it, I was gonna run out of battery. So I, oh, I made the worst decision ever, tighten the drag. There's no need to tighten the drag out here in 250 feet of water. It's not like he's gonna rock himself. Oh, 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 yes. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Yeah, that ain't a normal fish. That's like a real fish right there. That's a real fish. No, 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 no. Okay, he's still on. He just gave some crazy head shakes right there. Oh, he's doing it again. He's doing it again. Ah, no. Yes, he's still on. Oh, I thought he got off. Stop, why is he acting crazy? Okay, I'm not gonna increase my drag. Yes, 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 come up, come up. That's all you gotta do, buddy. He takes some line, I take some line. He takes some line, you know, it's it's a game of tug of war. <laughs> and the bigger the fish, the longer this game lasts. That's for sure. Oh my gosh, that's a big fish. You see him? You see the way he's shaking his head like that? He is very upset. He's coming up though. Like we are making progress on him. So that is good news. Holy smokes, he's like a brick. I think right now he's being dragged up and he's kind of just being lazy, but I think he's got a lot of energy still left in him. I can just tell. Like right now he's just annoyed that he's being pulled up, but he's letting himself get pulled up probably because he wants to see me. Oh, you see you see the rod tip? He's, he's doing this big head sway in motion. That's crazy. Oh, 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 he was really wiggling that time. That when they shake their head like that, there's usually a good chance that they can shake the jig right out of their mouth. So whenever they do that, it's very scary because you might lose your fish of a lifetime. Come on, we should be seeing color soon. Oh no, 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 buddy. Okay, that's right, ease. Sometimes you don't wanna put it too hard to the fish. And when they start to shake like that, you kind of like give ease just a tiny bit and it relaxes them. And then instead of freaking out, they kind of relax again. And then you can go back to pulling them up. But, oh, you see how hard he's pulling? Look at those head shakes, that's insane. I don't know what this is. Oh, oh, head shakes, head shakes. Oh, 
please, no, 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 come up. You know what, I'm gonna not touch anything. I'm gonna let him do it. If he wants to take all his line back down, then so be it. But I am not gonna put any more tension on this line. There we go. He stopped going down kind of gave up a bit now we're you know he got a nice chunk of line back but that's part of the fight come on bud where are you at i don't even see color yet what is happening he's going he's he's swimming like to the surface what this is so weird he's he's swimming out now how deep is he man this is crazy i'm my right arm is feeling it pretty good <laughs> Watch it be like a two pound fish. <laughs> and I'm just like struggling. He's doing weird like circular motions now. Yeah, he's doing like, he's swimming big circles on his way up, which could mean he's hooked in the side and he's like swimming sideways. Or that could also mean he's a big AP or he's just foul hooked. Okay, we got color down there. I, he's really deep, so I have no idea what he is. Okay, I'm putting, got the gaff ready. Got the gaff ready, boys. Oh, we got ourselves a big old amberjack. A big old amberjack. Get the gaff, boys, get the gaff. Oh my lord, he's heavy. Oosh. Oh, okay. Open the bale on the rod. Oh my, oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Holy spinoli. Yeah! Pull the hooks out of him. So he did have hooks in his side, which definitely made him harder to reel up. All right, I'm a little sunburnt. Yeah, baby! Look at that! B -b 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 beast! Oh! Yeah, not, not too shabby. Pretty stoked, pretty stoked. That right there is food! We're gonna have ourselves some amberjack fish cakes. Oh no! I just broke my knife off in his throat. <sighs> Shoot. Oh no. Breathe, buddy. Oh. oh my god, what a piece of meat. All right, buddy. I don't really wanna put my hand in his gills because there, there's that broken blade in there. And no surprise, our gas tank is empty again. So we'll fill her on up. And just like that, we got a full fuel tank. Boat's kind of cleaned up, looking all right. Time to get in the tower. Let's see, Molasses Reef Tower is right over there. So home is right there. Full speed. Got a little extra wind today. I always say, you know, one of the things that I'm really good at is parallel parking a boat. Look at that. A bo 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 boom. Look who showed up to the party. Hey, buddy. What a voluptuous little creature. Oh, big boy is getting some drink. Look at that face. How you doing, buddy? You been having a good day? Yeah, for those of you that don't know manatees, they do eat meat. Or they eat fish, at least. Whenever I throw carcasses off the boat, he'll uh, come and grab them. Ah, uh, drinking a, what is this? A sparkling water with squeezed fruit juice. Squeezed fruit. In the one and only South Florida Fish Channel koozie. Go get yourself some, southfloridafishchannel.com. But we got ourselves some bags, a fillet knife. Let's cut up this fish. Oh, I need a glove, actually. I want a glove for my left hand. Makes it a lot easier to hold the fish. Hey, buddy. Oh, no. No. Blood all over my clean boat. Hey, bud. Look at this guy I got. You proud of me? You can finally call me a father again. Because I brought home the bacon. Yeah. That's his happy, happy roll. That means he accepts my gift. And he agrees to everything I say. Okay. It's a bloody fish. All right, so first we're just gonna outline him. Okay. 
Okay, we'll outline the other side too, just like that. And this is a very skinny knife. If I had a thicker knife, it'd be easier to slide the uh, blade along the side back here. Let's uh, start with this side. Can't cut through the bones with this knife, so I'm gonna have to cut around those rib cages. Yeah, you see those rib? Look at those. So I, I can't cut through those. And it's been a while since I filleted a amberjack. I'd say not too bad, not too, not too shabby. See, we can cut this kind of like stomach meat right off of him, right over that rib cage. This actually makes a great piece right there. That's a great piece to throw on the grill with the skin still on it. Tender stomach meat. Slap, yeah. Oh, I just got some rain hitting me on the head. This one little cloud is raining on me. Typical Florida. All right, time to cut the meat off of the skin. Just hold down the skin and run your knife. Oops, not like that. Let's start on this side. Okay, I need a longer knife for this. But I'll make it work. Boom, wow. Look at that piece of meat. Cut it up so it'll fit in the bags. Yep, look at that worm in there. Look at this worm I'm pulling out. Whoa, that's only half of it. The other half is right here. Here he comes. Whoa, totally safe to eat. In fact, worms is an indicator that you have a healthy fish, as weird as that sounds but it's actually a good thing. If you had a fish with no worms in it, that could be questionable. But yeah, if you're totally against worms, then don't keep jacks. Well, good morning. I got this big old bag of amberjack. This is only half of the amberjack. The other half I gave to my neighbor and it's 5.30 in the morning. This is probably the earliest I've ever done the cooking part of one of these videos, but that's because we're going to marathon Good morning, buddy. To do some sword fishing and deep dropping with Captain Matt, but that's gonna be the next video, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm also got my laptop here because I was paddle boarding yesterday out in the channel and some big boats came by. Knocked me right off the paddle board and I lost my headset. I lost my really nice sunglasses. I lost my phone. It was, uh, Quite the adventure, but um, I'm gonna keep it real simple. I'm just gonna take a piece of amberjack. Wow, these are big pieces. Look at the size of that mama jama. Wow, it's dark in here. I'm just gonna cut off a piece. I only see one worm in here. So this amberjack didn't have that many worms compared to other amberjacks that I've seen. Come on, buddy, get down from the counter. Ah, <laughs> you see this little guy? He's a little rat. Hey. We're gonna pat the amberjack a little dry. Bloodline out. Just cut off a nice, nice piece. Like, that looks like a good piece. Right there, look at that. That right there is a beautiful piece of amberjack. Hey buddy, what are you doing? Here, I'll give you a piece. Take it, here. Take it and be free. Here, just don't rub your head in it, just eat it. <laughs> There we go, look at this beautiful piece of amberjack. It's a nice chunk of fish and it is worm free. So that is nice too. Although it doesn't matter if you eat the worms. Come here, buddy. Come here, come on. That's the best way to get them off the counter. You just give them a little piece of fish. I got some butter heating up in a skillet and then we're gonna take our piece of amberjack. We're just gonna lightly season it with some salt. Actually, we're gonna season it with our lemon pepper. I think lemon pepper's got a nice morning zest to it for this early in the day. Our butter's got a little sizzle going. Then we got our lemon peppered steak of amberjack going right into that butter. 
I don't know too many people that eat Amberjack. In fact, I don't think I know anybody that eats Amberjack. They usually just throw them back or they sell them. But I'm gonna find out how it tastes. Oh, and I have iMessage on my MacBook. That's why I'm using my laptop. Because I lost my phone, but I can still text everybody through my laptop. One of the great things about Apple. If you don't know, I'm a new Apple user. I've been Android user my entire life for like 13 years. And uh, I switched to Apple less than a year ago and I'm never going back. Let's give her a flip. Ooh, okay. All right, I'm in a bit of a hurry, so I really want to get to trying this amber check. Oh yeah, it is cooked through straight out of the skillet. A very good looking piece of fish right there. I'm a little nervous. I have no idea what to expect. I have no idea how it's going to taste. Um, just straight up amberjack. Greater amberjack. Here we go. <laughs> if it's a very good eating fish, I know where to catch basically an unlimited amount of these. So here we go. Hold on. I need, to, I need another bite. That's actually, that's actually pretty good. Ooh, nice big piece. Okay, let me really think about this. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Oh, it's so hot. Ooh, it's a very neutral fish. It doesn't have a fishy taste at all to it. In fact, all I taste is the lemon pepper, which is a very nice, fresh zest, and then a, just a, a flaky white, very firm. You definitely do not want to overcook it. This one's cooked just to perfection. I think if I cooked it much longer, it would become dry. That is good. I recommend, if you've never tried Amberjack, go steak one up and smash it on the grill. If you cook Amberjack on the grill, I would suggest you probably like rub butter on it every like two minutes, two or three minutes, just to keep it a little moist. I bet it would make some really good fish dip. And the main reason people don't eat amberjack, or at least all the people that I know that don't eat amberjack, is because they are known for having a lot of worms in the meat. I don't know what to tell you. Some of them have a lot of worms. I've caught some amberjacks that just have so many worms in them that you can't if you want to cut the worms out, there'd be like no meat left. This Amberjack, he only had like, I was able to just pick pick out the couple of worms that were in there and these pieces of meat don't have any worms in it. So I don't know, I guess that part's a hit or a miss. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. We got lots more fishing videos on the way and I'll see you guys on the very next episode. Cheers. Mm -hmm.